Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to show you guys this really cool Chrome and Firefox plugin called PSDLE. And what this thing does is it lets you see all your PlayStation purchases, including those that you made on the PS3, Vita, and the PSP. Because the PlayStation Store, since they updated it back in 2020, you can no longer view your PS3 or Vita or PSP purchases on the web version of the store. You have to go into those systems and look at your download list, or you can actually go through your full download list in your PlayStation slash Sony account settings, but it's really not a good time. So that's where this plugin comes in. It'll make it much easier, and you can also export all this data and put it in your own spreadsheet and sort through it even more easily. The plugin lets you do a little bit of sorting, a little bit of viewing, that's pretty easy, but putting it in your own spreadsheet, you can do whatever you want with it. You can draw statistics out of it, whatever. But let's just jump into it. This is the repository website for the plugin. Uh, you can also use it directly in web pages with JavaScript, um, but the Chrome plugin is obviously the easiest way to use it. So I already have it installed, as you can see here. Once it's installed, it'll just start working on the PlayStation Store website. So let's just start with the regular PlayStation Store. So if you go in here and then you go Game Library, this is where you can normally not see your PS3 and Vita games, it'll show you your PS4 and PS5 games, and you can filter them, but that's great, but they removed access to your old stuff. So if, you, if the plugin doesn't run, you just click it up here. I'm using Firefox, if you're wondering about that. You can click on this, and then it'll bring up this view, and this lets you add or delete different pieces of data in this database of PS4 and PS5 games. So you can just add new categories. So, for example, if you want the is downloadable and then you can give it a title um, downloadable and then you can export that as a csv i recommend that if you want to use it in a spreadsheet software like excel or sheets most easily json also works if you're more technical but that's not me and import button i guess you can import an existing list of pieces of data if you want to keep coming back and using it i guess if you make more purchases and you want to add them to your spreadsheet you can import the same categories but yeah i'll just quickly show you what this one looks like so you just hit csv and it'll download that let's just take that into google sheets here so you go import upload and then we'll just get it in our downloads here import this csv i like to just insert it doesn't matter what you do you can create a new spreadsheet insert it into this one if you insert so here we have all my purchases on PS4 and PS5 tells you what platform, so that's why there's multiples of each one. So that's why you'd want to bring it into this sort of software because you could potentially sort these into one listing each and then just have like a column that's like PS4 or PS5 compatible. And then this is not really a date, this is just the order that I purchased it. Downloadable, true, should be true for pretty much everything. Even like PT says true. I don't know when that would ever be false. I guess if something was actually delisted and removed from your download list, maybe like a demo or something, there's nothing false in, in this list anyways. So obviously these categories at the top match up with these ones that I selected here, including the empty one. But let's dive into the more juicy PS3 and Vita stuff. To get to that page, you will, instead of going to Game Library, you want to click Account Settings, and this will bring you to your Sony Entertainment Network settings. And then you want to hit transaction history. And this will say, we'll go to another page, let's go. So it'll seem kind of glitchy doing all this loading and then you'll get into this full interface of the PlayStation DLE plugin. It might take a while to load, especially if you have a lot of purchases like me. Right now you can see a bit of info, you can see the prices, all these $0 PlayStation Plus purchases. Uh, probably let it load for a while. It started can get kind of crashy if you're not careful. So now, here it goes, it loaded up a full list. So now we can see some Vita games. So you can click all these things and view the image. If you go way down, we got all PS3 games. So you can actually see your purchases and the purchase dates. And then I believe this column is size in bytes or bits, not totally sure. But that's why we can bring it into Google Sheets and we can sort this in a much easier format. So we want to export view. 
So this is similar to this export view. This is just a slightly more extensive one. There's a few more options here. So basically I would just add everything because why not have everything? It'll just make your life easier. You can delete columns if you want once you bring it into another piece of software. I recommend hitting CSV because it imports into Google Sheets easier. JSON, also an option. Let's go into this spreadsheet again, make a new sheet, same as before, import. And then this is what you get when you bring it into Google Sheets. And the first thing that I would do is this column, the image column, I would go in there and then we're gonna say image and then click, and then click the cell with the image URL because these are the URLs of all these games. If you do image equals, it'll bring it into Google Sheets format. So that's kind of nice. And then you can just click and do all of them. And then you have this nice little column with banners in it. Image URLs are not very important to look at now that we have the real thing. I'm not the best at Google Sheets or Excel, but I'm sure there's shortcuts for most of the things I'm doing. Obviously we've got the name of each game. We still have the two versions for PS4 and PS5. Size doesn't show you the size for PS4 and PS5 games, I guess, because they have a lot of d updates, so it's not really worth listing sizes because they're constantly changing, and it's not a good selling point if your game is like Call of Duty and it's 200 gigabytes. Date is the date of purchase, not the release date, which is kind of disappointing there. I didn't see a piece of data that shows you release date. That would have been cool to have. Base game comes up if something is a piece of DLC or an expansion or DLC of a, a main game. But anyways, this way you can view your full catalog of all your PSN digital purchases because Sony doesn't really let you do that very easily in an official capacity anymore. So the icons column, I believe the first link is basically the same as the image column. Not sure what the second link doesn't seem to do anything not necessarily an important column. URL is really handy because this will actually link you to the PSN web store page of that product. But right now it doesn't seem to be working. Probably just an issue with the PlayStation Network as usual. I actually found this cool formula you can do for formatting the sizes. So if we go in format number, custom number format, and then we just put in this formula and apply it, that'll convert all these things into more readable file sizes, which is really cool. Vita compatibility tells you if it works on Vita or not. Kind of handy for sorting, but you also can see the platforms over here. And then the next column is also platforms. Platform usable is because you could download Vita games to the PS3 and then transfer them to your Vita. But yeah, both of these are, are helpful for being able to sort your games. Unfortunately, they didn't do the same thing for PS4 and PS5. They made them into two different items. Product ID just shows you the ID of these games. Not very helpful to me. Publisher shows you the publisher, but it, again, it doesn't include PS4, PS5 stuff for some reason. But yeah, I thought this was a really cool way to take a look at your previous purchases, especially on older PlayStation platforms that are not as easily accessible anymore. I was looking into this because I already had a spreadsheet of all my PlayStation digital purchases, but it was mostly basically every time I buy anything, I would just add it to the spreadsheet. But now I have a definitive list that I can clean up and replace my manual list. So this is my original spreadsheet. So I have all my platforms. I have whether I played them or not. I have PSVR, which I don't actually have that data for, from the official store data. And then I have this other column for PlayStation TV and whether that game has local multiplayer on PlayStation TV. So I have a bit more data, but also not as accurate in some ways as the stuff pulled from the actual PlayStation store. So this is my slightly cleaned up version that I've been working on for a little bit. I converted some of these columns into checkboxes. I cleaned up some columns that I didn't need. I kind of moved them to the side. I definitely need to combine some of these duplicate listings. And then I'd rather just have platform checkboxes similar to this one. Uh, it's a bit easier to sort and read through, but I think it's pretty cool. And I'm excited to be able to combine my two data sets into something that's much more accurate and usable. And I know that it'll be very comprehensive and it'll actually have everything. Oh, here's a good example of base game versus name of the game because God of War collection includes multiple games that have different trophy sets. So that would be an example or something like the Splinter Cell trilogy because each of those games are separate from the base game. So that's kind of neat. But yeah, that was PlayStation DLE developed by this guy here, Repod37. 
He's been working on this a long time. I believe he said eight years this plugin's been around, but hopefully this brings some more attention to it because it's really cool. Hopefully you might find that helpful and let me know if you enjoy making spreadsheets as much as I do.